evening. I am bringing to you Mr. Brian Nolan, who is already in city council. Good evening, Mr. Nolan. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. All right. I'm here to help you let the citizens know what you plan on doing for your ward this time around. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, my name is Brian W. Nolan. I am the third ward city councilman here in the city of Flint. I'm a product of the Flint community. Um, I graduated from Flint Community Schools. Um, I'm 48 years of age. Um, I still stay in the same house that I was born and raised in over on Bundy Avenue. Okay. Uh, I'm a Flint Community School teacher, and I've been teaching for about 22 years. And this is my first term in office. First term in office? First okay. Term. And what ward are you running for? Or what, what ward are you in now? Third ward. Third, third ward. City of Flint is probably the biggest ward. It actually is the biggest ward in the city of Flint. Um, it goes... Um, from Hamilton all the way to Carpenter Road, and then it goes across the river, and I go out by the Kersey Dam as well. But I have one of the biggest um, industrial sites in my ward, which is the Buick City site. Okay, okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Um, I gra I'm a Flint Community School graduate. Um, after I graduated from um, high school, I ended up going to a vocational school where I got a cosmetology license, and I'm a licensed cosmetologist, and I've been that for the last 25, 26 years. Um, I then went on to college where I graduated from Central State University in Wilberforce, Ohio in 1992 with a bachelor's in elementary education. Um, I took some additional classes and just this past May 5th, I graduated from the University of Michigan with a master's in public administration. Okay. Horace Rackman School of Public Administration. Okay, okay, okay. So for our viewers that really doesn't know exactly what a city council person or city councilman does, can you explain? The duties a little bit well you know our our job has been screwed a little bit now because we don't have the power that we once had but really the city council person's um, charge was really to be the keeper of the purse for the city of Flint we watch over the finances for the city of Flint mm -hmm. um, because we have an emergency manager in place right now um, we don't have that power anymore um, and primarily what we do now um, we primarily do um, um, boards, if, if people have, um, well, if they're board appointments or if they're um, different um, charter amendments or things of that sort that comes before us, then we look at them and we have discussions about them. But our power has been uh, minimized at this particular time um, because of uh, the public act that's in place right now with the emergency manager's law. Right. But, um, you know, one thing that we still do is we still are active in the community, or at least I am still active in the community. I still take the residents' concerns, I still make referrals, and I still return all phone calls um, when I receive them. Okay, that's great. So what would you say would be your greatest accomplishment? One thing that we still do is we still are active in the community, or at least I am still active in the community. I still take the residents' concerns, I still make referrals, and I still return all phone calls. Um, when I receive them. Okay, that's great. So what would you say would be your greatest accomplishment on the city council? Um, I think one of the biggest accomplishments, uh, well, it's probably three, but um, one of the very first one would be um, getting the property rezoned so that Hamilton Health, um, Health Systems could actually build their new facility on the corner of Leith and North Saginaw. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 35,000 square foot facility. Um, I was extremely elated to be at Park um, of getting that rezoned so that they can bring a much needed service to the north side of Flint. I think um, secondly, um, it would be that um, I pride myself on returning calls within 24 hours. Um, whenever someone calls me, I try to make sure that I call within 24 hours and sometimes I, can, I even return a call that same day. Mm -hmm. But I really pride myself on, uh, on that. And then thirdly, it would probably be um, the work that I've done at Burston Fieldhouse. Um, since I've been at Burston Fieldhouse, uh, since the emergency management's been in place, we, we didn't have a director there, so I volunteer my time. Okay. Um, no charge to the residents of the city of Flint, and I go down there and I open up the facility, I clean the facility, I cut the grass, and I'm making sure that the community, the youth in the community have a safe um, place where they can go and have some physical activities um, there. So I think that that's one of the, one of, one, that's the other three. Mm -hmm. Those three are the, um, the three things that I'm most proud of since being on city council. Okay, that's great. What are some <coughs> of the disappointments you have had on the council? Well, I think one of my, 
the 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 greatest disappointment is um, my vote related to um, having the city um, allowing the emergency manager to come in. That was one vote that, um, you know, in hindsight, I think that we should have fought that mm -hmm. um, because the things that we thought were going to be in place and what we thought were going to happen did not. And from that, a $9 million debt is now a $19 million debt. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that the same um, emergency manager that we had that helped to incur this larger debt is going to be coming back. So I think that's one of my my things that I'm not most proud of since being on city council. I can understand that. I can understand that. Have you noticed a lot of blight in your um, my, ward? My area is probably the most blightedest area in the um, in the city mm -hmm. um, because I have um, some areas that are um, densely populated because of um, demolition or just blighted property. You know, like I stated earlier, Buick City's in my ward. Right. And that is the, that's over 400 acres, um, two mile strip of just vacant land. And, um, you know, you have tall weeds and other things too. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, a real bad problem with um, scrapping mm -hmm. um, in the third ward. You know, as people move out um, before the houses can really be secured, people are coming in and, and uh, just ravishing um, those homes. And that causes blight as well. Also, I have the east side between Lewis and Franklin, okay. and um, that has always been a problem area. And a couple of years back, we um, demolished, I think, 175 homes in that particular area, mm -hmm. and now it's overrun with the high grass and all. And one of the things I think that um, I fought this emergency manager that we have in place is they did not have a plan in place to, to deal with uh, the grass cutting. And I think that if they had had that in place, I think that um, we wouldn't have all these high weeds that we have now. Exactly. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the land bank has a contract to do it, and uh, the contract was actually signed a couple of months ago, or about a month, month and a half ago, and because of paperwork or the lack of um, follow-through in terms of the city, they just signed the contract last Monday, and now the land bank is cutting but they're only going to cut once, um, one time this year. Okay. And they're going to different areas. But the grass now is some as high as three, four feet high. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that that's one thing that um, they need to move forward. And I'm hoping that they will take some input from the city council as it relates to that. Exactly, exactly. So now that we've learned a little bit about your ward, tell the citizens why they should elect you back. Um, I feel that I've done... Um, a good job. Mm -hmm. I feel that um, I'm very receptive to the needs of the community and to my constituents. Um, I'm a good listener. I'm a strong advocate. Uh, and I'm a fighter. Um, and I just want to make sure that we have somebody in place that's going to be um, accessible to the community because that was the one thing that I heard prior to me running the first time is We've had council people in the past that weren't accept, accessible to the community. And that's one thing that um, I pride myself on. Um, people see me. You know, I ride my bike through the, um, through the ward. Um, um, if they call, I go by. If it's, if it's things happening in the community, I'm always at them. Um, and I'm just, you know, I just want to be a strong advocate for the city, citizens of the city of Flint and for the people of the third ward. Okay. Um, a couple more questions. Okay. How do you feel about what's going on with the schools, all of the schools closing? And um, that's a big one because I am a Flint community school teacher. Um, you know, I do understand that we do have um, funding issues with the school because we don't have the tax base that we once had. But I think that it has to be strategic in terms of school closing that they're going to do. It. They have to look at the community and what it's doing to um doing to the community because once these schools are closed, what are they doing to repurpose them or securing them? Because a lot of times when they close schools and um, they don't, the school board don't follow through and have a plan in place to, to repurpose them or, or secure them like they should be, 
they become haven for crime and other activities because what happens a lot of times is the people break into them mm -hmm. and they start scrapping them. Exactly. And once they scrap them, um, they're not going to be um, usable for the community. So I think that, you know, it just needs to be some real thought put into it in terms of what schools they close and why they're closing them. Because one of the things that I've seen um, over the last few years in terms of school closings, a lot of them um, in the northern part of the city are the ones that they're closing um, on a faster rate. Actually, there's only one school in the third ward now, which is Carpenter Road, and that's like an island all to itself. Mm -hmm. And at one time, it was one of the schools that they were thinking about closing. And I went to the school board and I advocated to um, keep that school open. And I, and I guess through my being a strong advocate and, and the parent groups from that area coming out, they saved, um, saved the school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I do know that there's a lot of challenges um, here in the city of Flint related to the Flint Community Schools, but I think that um, um, we just need to be, um, we need to think very carefully when we get ready to start to close schools. Okay. All righty. So is there anything else you would like to say? Um, just that I am Brian W. Nolden, or Brian B.B. Nolden. I am a candidate for the third ward in the city of Flint, um, and I welcome um, your support in re-electing me to this position. Um, I feel that I've done an adequate job. I, I feel that like I'm very accessible to the community, and um, I know there's a lot of work to be done. Okay. One more question. Okay. Where is your campaign headquarters going to be? Uh, actually, <laughs> I'm still debating because um, four years ago, I, I had it on the corner of Pasadena and Martin Luther King, and I am talking with the gentleman again because the building is available. I just got to find out what the price is going to be because um, I have limited, limited resources right now. So um, that's something that we're working. But if anybody want to get in contact with me um, or if you want to send a donation to me, I'm the committee to reelect Bryant B.B. Nolden, 754 East Bundy Avenue, Flint, Michigan, 48505. All righty. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Nolan, and you have a great evening. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll be back in a minute. Prayers are making a difference, and that's what this meeting is all about, is preparation for September 14th for Prayer Chain Day. Call me at 810-766-8887 and adopt your street today. It's not too late. As I'm telling you, September 14, the glory cloud is going to be over Genesee County. So give me a call, 810-766-8887 and 766-8887. And adopt your street today. I'm telling you, God is moving in a mighty way. You want to be a part of it. You want to be a part of it. So just give me a call. Give me a call. And come on and take back your city. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. May God always be with you. 766.